Okay, good morning. So my name is Jose Jimenez. I am professor at the Technical University of Catalonia. And now we are going to try to downscale a bit. So this morning, so we start with sea level rise, now with uh, impacts, and now we are going for adaptation. We are going to talk about adaptation to climatic coastal impact and with a special reference to relative sea level rise or to sea level rise. This is the, what type of impact? So this is the result of a survey that we did the last year in the, uh, in a, in a initiative for the GPI climate and GPI ocean. So we launched a survey between the stakeholders in Europe and we, we have about 200 respondents and we asked the people to identify which were the most important impacts related to sea level rise in the different bases around Europe. So here you have the result for all the basins, the North Sea, the Mediterranean, the Eastern Atlantic, the Baltic, the Black Sea, the Arctic, and the last one, it is the, all the basins together. As you can see, so there is a high variability. So then when we talk about impact and we talk about adaptation, so there is a high variability even inside the same country. And the most important, so the, when the people think in sea level rise, so all the people think in inundation, so the most important impact identified by all the basin was erosion. So what's the first one? So the second one was increasing the stone impact and also damage to infrastructure and to private uh, property. And the third one was permanent flooding, so gradual inundation. So in Euro, apparently, so gradual inundation or permanent inundation is not the most important impact. And this most important impact are very much related to the indices that Ross presented before, that are sea level rise, coastal erosion, and coastal floods. So then we are on the same way, but we are approaching from a different standpoint. So in the same survey, so we asked the people, okay, these are the impacts. So how your countries are adapting to this? So the first question that we ask is about the effectiveness of the system adaptation strategy in the different country. And the most answer, or the most uh, common answer was that they were insufficient. They were not effective enough, according to their criteria. And also we asked about the what was their opinion about the flexibility of the existing coastal adaptation plans? And again, the most important is that they disagreed that the plans were flexible enough in order to cope with expected variation in sea level rise, increase in sea level rise, and so on. So then we have a problem. So then we have a strategy that's apparently according to the stakeholders. The stakeholders were researchers, but also people working in governments. So from the 200, from all the bases in Europe. So this is quite representative. So the, this is where we are. So we have a problem with adaptation. When we talk about coastal adaptation, so we are talking about adjusting to the impact and the potential risks associated with the climatic hazard, but here, mostly with sea level rise. And essentially involves to implement a strategy to, enha to enhance the coastal resilience and to reduce the vulnerability. However, we have to take into account that any coastal adaptation plan typically requires a long time in order to be implemented. And this is a problem, essentially because the current risks are getting worse. So just is looking to the uh, indicator that Ross presented, so the sedimentary coastlines are already eroded without sea level rise. The storm impact and damage are frequent and apparently they are increasing, so we are getting Worse, so we require a long time to implement adaptation. So this is a problem. And especially the problem is that apparently for the people say, okay, for coastal adaptation, we need a lot of money. No, you need a lot of time. And this is a problem. So the most evident declining resource for adaptation is not money. It is time. So if we delay in order to implement adaptation, so we have a very big problem. And it is, it doesn't, uh, it is not related to money. It's related to time. Uh, okay. Just to give you an idea, so here we have, oh, sorry. Here we have different typical coastal adaptation works. And in blue, it is the typical lifetime. And the triangle in white, it is the typical implementation and, and planning time in order to implement this. So it means that, in, just to give you an idea, so we require one third of the lifetime in order to implement a coastal adaptation in the best situation where you have money and so on. So then we have a problem that if we don't start just now, so we have a future problem in coastal adaptation. 
how can we approach? So the typical top-down approach is, OK, what if or what will occur if this change is happening? So then with this, so we identify which is the impact, and we decide which is the response to be implemented. However, the new approach or the no, the new, so probably the, the, the most uh, uh, adequate approach, it is what we call it the adaptation tipping point approach. So it's how much change are we able to cope with. So with this, it is which are the conditions that we are not able to maintain our objectives for the coastal zone, and then when this occurs. So just to show you an example. So here we are in Italy. So this is a typical Italian beach in the Adriatic during summer. So all the surfaces occupied by people. So the 11% of the PMB, the GMP in, in, in the Mediterranean is coming from tourists. So then we have a problem if coastal erosion is, is taking place. I know we are expecting that silver rice is also going to produce uh, an additional erosion. So here we have in the y-axis, so we have the recreational carrying capacity of the beaches that depend on the surface. And in the y-axis, so we have sea level rise. So we are going to identify when sea level rise is going to produce a problem related to recreational carrier capacity. So for my country, for Italy, I am, not from, I am from Spain, but imagine that I am from Italy. It's okay. My objective is to maintain the current recreational carrying capacity at the 90%. If the carrying capacity decreases below the 90%, I will have a problem in the economy. So here we have... The expectation is the blue line on how the recreational carrying capacity decreases with sea level rise, according to the expected erosion. Here we have an additional problem. So here we have a line, but we have some shadow area around the line. And this is the uncertainty produced by using different models to estimate erosion from sea level rise. Because we are not going to predict erosion. We are going to predict sea level rise from what we presented this morning, uh, very early in the morning. So, oh, sorry. We need a model to convert this to erosion, and there is not a unique model. So we need different model, and we have some uncertainty. So then, when we go to our point, so we identify which is the expected sea level rise that this is going to produce this uh, failure in the objective. So here it is, okay, we require 50 centimeters of sea level rise in order to have a problem. So now the time, we have another uncertainty. So depending on how the sea level rise will change, which is the scenario, so this tipping point will occur at different times. So just to give you an example, here we identify a 50 centimeter sea level rise for the tipping point. We go to the NASA tool that was presented this morning, and we look for the site, which is the time in order to obtain this decline in the objective. So here, oh, again, sorry. Here we have the different, this is time in the, in the x-axis, and here we have all the different scenario, and we have different times in order to have this tipping point. So we have an uncertainty in the prediction of the time, and once we, sorry, in the prediction of the sea level rise, when we have the sea level rise, we have also an uncertainty on when this will occur. So this is a problem for adaptation. So when will it start to adapt? I, I just want to illustrate which are the problems in adaptation. Okay, so now we know when to do it, what to do. So here are the typical response or the different kind of response to uh, coastal risk and sea level rise according to the IPCC. So probably all of you know this very well. So here we have from, this is the current situation of response, advanced protection, retreat, accommodation, and ecosystem. Just to give you some examples. So this is for protection. So forget the table. So here protection means that we are going to do something very active in order to cope with the risk with the coastal rig with sea level rise. So when we talk about coastal protection, so we think in two different strategies, sediment base and hard protection. Sediment base, very flexible. Hard protection, very robust, and we can predict very well which are the safety level. Problem, hard protection is very expensive. In many cases, they cannot be affordable for poor country. Sediment base, apparently, it is very flexible, very easy to implement. And here we have a very good example, but this is unique. So this is a protection strategy for sea level rise in the Netherlands. So you will never, oh, you will not, you cannot see anything similar to this in any different country. So here they put 21.5 million of cubic meters of sand in six months in order to be protected for the next 20 years. Of course, you can do, but you... Probably this is very difficult to find in anywhere. But this is a very good example. And here we have the, this is what they did in 2011. 
And it is expected that this sediment will be distributed along the coast and will protect the coast for the next 20 years. So it's a very good example in terms of advancing time. So we are preventing the, imp the expected impact for the next 20 years. However, all the sediment-based strategy, with the exception of the Netherlands, they, they put the, the, the hand on the North Sea and there's plenty of sun. So we have to answer several questions before to say that adapta our future adaptation will be based on sediment. So how much sediment do we need for the future? We want to adapt for the next 100 years, 50 years, whichever. So how much sun do we need? The second question is, do we have sun enough? And can we afford? So then this, all of this is related to we need to identify a strategic sediment reservoir in order to get all the resources for to be adapted for the future. And again, we have a problem. So here we have in the x-axis we have time. This is the sediment volume that you, we have. And here we have the, the two dashed line horizontal is according to the available stock in your site. And here it is the requirements of sediment according to the different scenario. And again, we have an uncertainty once we identify that we have a strategic sediment reservoir on how long this reservoir will be useful in order to get the sediment. So we have a big uncertainty in predict the tipping point. We have a big uncertainty on how will this tipping point occur. And now we have a big uncertainty also in which is the use of how how much sediment we can use in the next 10 or 20 or 30 years, depending on this. So they, this probably this is very much related to why the people is still going to refine the adaptation plans, because we have a lot of problems in order to go from the global numbers to the local numbers. And this is pure local. So in mind, if we have this uncertainty with local numbers, so with the previous number that Ross presented, and Ross was very clear in this. So don't use for local adaptation just to get an idea. It's very useful for, to identify the hot spot, which part of the country is going to be more sensitive or not. But once you go to adaptation, you, you have to go to the local level. This is hard protection. The things vary. So how many countries of this can afford this? And even the problem is that this needs to be updated. And the upgrade of this for the new sea level so must cost a huge amount of money. So that it is a huge amount of money to implement and now to update for the new sea level rise because the operating gates need to be a great in order to cope with the expected sea level rise. So it will be also very expensive. So just to give you an idea about the two different strategies. So now we will go to accommodation. Accommodation, it is also a very common uh, adaptation strategy, but normally this only or very effective for a small sea level rise. So we are talking about early warning system, and we are talking also to some small actions in order to accommodate to the new situation. This is an example for coastal flooding or for sea level rise, where we, we are only changing the flood proofing type of building in order to accommodate to the site. So this is what is proposed a different type by FEMA. And here we have some application for a coastal area in the east coast of the United States. And here we have also for Nigeria, where this is here for the city of Lagos, where we have floating house. So then we are adapting to this. But of course, this is only adapting for very small sea, uh, sea level rise rates. If, this, if the sea level rise rate is, the magnitude is very high, so probably this will not be longer useful. So we move also to advance, so don't accommodate, let's go to advance. So this is very much related to hard uh, protection. So the problem, it is very expensive. So we can cover with relative high sea level rise and the cost is too much. So here we have some example. This is one example for the Atoll Island in order to cover with relative sea level rise. So when we have a, a natural Atoll Island, so probably the Atoll Island will be able to cope with some sea level rise. But when we build in the island, so when we have a problem, so we have taken out the natural resilience of the island, so we have to cope with this. And one example, this is a proposal for the Maldives, where they are trying, sorry, they are trying to rise the land. So of course, again, so in mind, how much time do we need for this? And how much money do we need for this? But this is, a, it is an existing uh, option in all the uh, different options that we have. This is for an actual island in order to avoid migration. And here we have for also this could be, um, could be easily implemented in very large cities. So this is an example for Tokyo. 
and where there is a progressive adaptation to the sea level rise. And depending on the, how the sea level rise or the local sea level rise is, it is increasing. So then there will be a moment in which the seas in adaptation is not no longer valid and they go to advance where they claim it is land claim, they rise the land and they build again. This can be affordable in the sense that the price of the land there is very high. So then we can use the land price in order to pay for this type of uh, advance. So of course, this cannot be applicable in anywhere, but this is also an adaptation battle. Then we go to something that nobody likes, retreat. And retreat, nobody likes because probably it is the adaptation option with the largest social conflict associated. So nobody wants to live well. But here, in some cases, it's not another option. We have no money to do the other one. There is not, let's say, in a cost-benefit analysis or even for finances, so we cannot, we cannot rise our land. Here we have an example for Fiji, where there is a plan for migration for planet relocation. So here we have different uh, 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 villages that has been removed or they have a plan. But again, here, this is a warning. So decisions to move one villa that was affected by cyclones and by sea level rise and so on take more than 10 years in order to go to a new position. So then again, time is very important here. Time is very important, especially because you have to negotiate with the people, and then you need a, a strong public participation in order to decrease the social conflict. So this is for Fiji, and here we have an example from Europe. This is fully different. So here we are not talking that the people are at risk. So here they, it is the territory at risk. This is an example for UK, where they have retreat in this area, permitting that they to be flooded during a storm and so on. So then they remove some protection. They put a protection in the back. And now this area is free, and it is evolving on the sea level rise and under storm without any problem. And here we have an, an additional example for Spain. This is this is our, not a village. This is a campsite, so this is not a problem. So here, the uh, retreat means spatial planning, where we define a new setback and say the campsite must be behind the setback. So here we are retreating, we are removing the expected damage for sea level rise and storm. So this it is avoiding the damage in terms of other to the sea level rise or to the coast of Asia. And finally, what is this? The way. So if we go to Europe, say the Green Deal, natural-based solution, please don't use natural-based solution. Use natural-based measure. Solution if they are solving the problem. We don't know. It's for the future. So let's say ecosystem-based measure, ecosystem or natural-based measure. So we have different examples. The idea is to hope or to help the natural resilience or to promote the natural resilience to the coast to this coastal risk. So remember adaptations to enhance resilience. So here it is trying to promote the natural resilience. So we have some examples. So here we have for Nigeria, and here we have for Spain, where we are trying to restore the original ecosystem in order to be protected. However, take care. So if we plan a mangrove, so go to the literature in order to see how much width how much why must be a mangrove forest in order to protect the territory against stone surge? This is helping, this is not solving. Okay, if you want to be protected by a mangrove against a big stone surge, so probably you will require several hundred meters of wide forest of mangrove. So then imagine, so we are planting mangrove, you require time in order to let the mangrove to grow. So then this is helping, but this is not solving the problem now. Again, time is important. And this is, for, this is a coastal dune in Spain order also to try to improve the resilience against the impact of a storm. Again, so we require time in order to permit the dunes to be forced. And also, we require space in order to put all of this. So then, seeing that when we are going to use natural-based solution, one of the most important resources is space in order to implement or to recover the forest or to recover the dune. So here we have an example also for Spain. So this is uh, the Ebro Delta. This is an agricultural area that is affected by impact of, of a storm. And we are expecting a high impact of sea level rise there. And this is a plan where we are going to restore the natural area before agriculture took place there. So we are trying to, uh, sorry, we are trying to restore dunes, wetlands, and so on. But we require to buy the land to the agriculture in order to produce this natural base uh, measure uh, to, to cover with risk. So it is natural based, but we require also a space, and this means also to be associated to retreat. 
all these typical response, so probably are not effective just by themselves. So probably the, the most useful approach is that we have to combine. And here the period, what we call it, uh, a period, what we call it the adaptation pathway approach. So essentially, it's a sequence of different response in order to adapt in a long time to different changing conditions. So during one time, so probably sediment base could be useful, but for a given sea level rise is no longer useful, we have to change to a different type of response. So then it is a sequence of different response that we saw before. So then all the response that we saw have to be combined in order to define our coastal adaptation plan for the future. So here you have some example for rural and for urban. So in the copy of the presentation, so you have this, and also you have all the reference there where you can find detailed information about that. Just to finalize, so for all of these, so we have also some constraints to adaptation. And we have what we call a limits and what we have barriers. Limits are technical, technological limits. So there is not an adaptation option available to reduce the impact. Here, when we say that there is no adaptation option, means in a given time, I'm maintaining the functionality. So imagine, so of course, I can put a seawall very high in order to protect the Ebro Delta against sea level rise. There is no technological limit for that, it is economic. But if I do, so the delta is losing the functionality, so it is a solution, but it is changing the functionality of the code. So when we talk about technological limit, it's one adaptation option that this is going to change the system functionality that we want to maintain. Barriers are something that can be overcome with some effort, and we talk about economic barriers. If the implementation, it is most costly that the benefit that they're going to produce, financing, that means that probably this economical feasible, but we cannot access to the money to pay for. So economic and financing are very different. And finally, the social conflict. So we identify in an analysis that we did for many countries, or for different countries, that the most important barrier was social. And just to finalize the take home measures, so sea level rise is going to continue to rise, as we mentioned before. The coastal impact that presented by Ross will increase in the future. So coastal adaptation will be needed, even that we implement very efficient mitigation plans, so we will require coastal adaptation. Second, the most important adaptation plan for the future is coastal impact can be avoided by preventing new development. If we don't develop the coast very close to the shoreline, so we are avoiding future problems. So this is a very good coastal adaptation. The response to sea level rise and to the coastal risk will be much more effective if we combine and sequence some plan according to how the, the conditions will change. And finally, adaptation typically required in order to implement it several decades to be implemented. So timing is important if we want to be adapted for the future, so we have to start now. And this is all for now. Thank you for your attention.